Hello everyone and welcome to uh, my little tutorial on how to create a web application. Uh, my name is Trevor Page and I will uh, bring you through uh, a process that, uh, uh, actually a fairly quick process for uh, how to create uh, a web application a little, quite rapidly um, with the help of something called Spring Roo. Uh, the entire presentation should take about 40 minutes or so. Uh, to go through all, all the steps, but once you understand um, uh, the concrete steps that are needed to create a web, web application using Spring Roo, you'll be able to, to just fly through it if you need to do it again. Um, so what we're going to cover is uh, namely Spring Roo, uh, which is a uh, you know software uh, package that allows you to uh, deploy a web application quite quickly. Uh, it's kind of like a code generation framework. <clears throat> We're going to talk about Tomcat, which is a web server, which you'll need to uh, actually launch your web application onto once you've actually created your web app. Um, Tomcat will, will be the thing that will allow you to go and navigate to an internet website and, uh, and hit the actual web app and, and allow you to use it. Um, Maven as well we'll be talking about, uh, which is just a... Uh, program that allows you to organize your dependencies so what uh, things what packages and what jar files you'll need um, in your web app um, maven will actually handle we'll talk about hibernate a little bit uh, which is the um, uh, framework that allows you to tie your code into a database and we'll talk about toad uh, for mysql which is just a little i'll show you a little uh, program that i use to um, sort of manage my databases and, and query the databases and that stuff using uh, SQL uh, language. Okay, so essentially the object objective here is um, to allow you to learn how to create a web app using Spring Roo um, and, and have that web application be tied in with a database, in this case a MySQL database, um, and actually have you be able to, to launch that web app on a uh, Tomcat web server um, so that you can actually go and type in the internet URL and, and see the actual web app in action. So that's what we're going to cover today and uh, and I can't wait to do it. Alright so what I'm going to do here is, uh, is build a web page, uh, a web application essentially from scratch and um, I've, I've just had one dry run through of this already before I recorded the video. Um, so if, if I do hit any unexpected uh, problems, and hopefully I do hit some unexpected problems, because um, that way you'll be able to see how I go about solving them. Um, perhaps I'll use some Google searches and show you some strategies there. Um, so that'll be kind of neat. Uh, but basically what I'm going to build here is um, a web application where I will be able to type in um, some like I'll create some users type in some usernames and some passwords and actually store them into a database using an actual web application view um, and it will be created by uh, spring Roo. so that'll be kind of um, that'll be a neat um, education for you to, to, to learn spring Roo and to learn um, how how it's used and, and what it actually can accomplish which is actually quite a lot so that's that's really nice so <clears throat> let's start I, I've typed in how to build a web app um, so I actually when you cr uh, launch your spring source tool suite oops I just launched two um, you, you'll get this screen to select the workspace um, and I just literally typed this in how to build a web app um, so my your workspace is kinda like your your desktop for your um, programming I guess if you will so this doesn't exist yet, so I just say OK, and it'll create it. Um, and it'll start up the Spring Source Tool Suite. So this will be the first screen you see, and it asks you for usage. I'll help them out and say OK. Um, so this is your welcome screen. Usually I just close the welcome screen. Um, and I'm presented with the default view, the default Spring view. And I, I usually... I don't usually use the Spring Explorer or the task list. I just like the outline. Um, it's personal choice, really. So what we want to do here is create a project. 
Um, so first I created a workspace, which is what you see here. Essentially, workspace will list um, projects in this package explorer window here. Um, so let's create a new project. But instead of just creating a regular old Java project, I'm actually going to create a Spring Roo project, which um, which just helps with some you know configuration things that that uh, Roo will use. Um, so what's our project name going to be? Well, the project name is kind of important because it will use that name when you're actually typing in your website address. Um, it can be modified later, but um, a good project name should be thought out, at, you know, at the beginning. Um, but of course, I'm not going to follow my own um, advice, and I'm just going to call it my first web app. But really, th this should, you know, be something that reflects what your project really is. Um, which sounds like ridiculous advice, but it's true. Uh, top level package name uh, is generally just source. That's generally what I use. Um, it's going to use the default Roo installation, which comes with the Spring Source Tool Suite uh, package when you download it. Um, it'll have Maven support. Uh, Maven, <coughs> what Maven is, it's essentially a uh, dependency management system, um, which means when you create a web application, um, a web app will use a whole variety of things. Um, uh, when it is being when it's being created and when it's running um, like uh, persistence technology which is something like hibernate uh, which hopefully you read about in the ebook uh, that this video accompanies um, hibernate's used to help you with uh, persisting things to a database so you'll take a java object and essentially um, take what's in the object and save it into a database so that you can retrieve it later so that you can actually you know log in do stuff save stuff log out and then when you log in again or restart your web application um, you'll actually still be able to load up all that information um, that you save so that's a, an example of uh, what hibernate is and in order to have hibernate work with your code there's a whole bunch of uh, jar files is what essentially they are um, Java Archive, I believe is what JAR stands for. Uh, Java Archive files that Hibernate has freely available, but you need to kind of import them and you know put them into your resources and your build path and all this stuff. And it's it's kind of annoying, but Maven takes care of everything for you. Um, it's it's obviously a little bit of work to figure figure out how to use Maven. But uh, I think it's well worth it for the trade-off of it being able to handle all of your dependencies for you, because that can be a nightmare. Um, so yeah, we're going to be using Maven. Um, packaging uh, with a jar, sure. Actually, I usually choose a war file. Um, but I believe when you do the Maven, I use Maven to do my builds. Um, and my uh, packaging, I believe it does too. So it packages it with a war file, which is, oh geez, what's a war stand for? Uh, web archive, I believe, because um, with a with a web archive file, you can just literally drag and drop it into something called Tomcat, which is a server, a web server, and it'll just essentially deploy uh, everything that um, is contained inside of that WAR file, um, which is essentially your web application. So you just you know copy paste or drag and drop, and then you know, voila, um, Tomcat will take it and. Um, take the one file and it kind of explodes it into um, your web application that you can then you know access from the web so that's nice um, blah 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 so next uh, finish to create the new project okay finish so it'll Roo will create everything and the Roo shell will try to launch sometimes it doesn't work uh, on the first run is what I noticed um, it just says, please stand by while the Roo shell is loaded completely. And it doesn't do anything. So I'll have to restart that Roo shell. But you see here in, in my first web app, it's already created all these things for us. Um, which is really nice. This is why I love Roo so much. Um, but obviously it's buggy still. So it's not loading up. So I just close the Roo shell and then I go window and show view and other and I just type in Roo, and there it is. 
Then you say open Ruchel for projects. You select your project, which is my first web app, and you say OK. And then it tries to load. There you go. So here's where the magic happens, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as you can see, it says welcome to Spring Roo for assistance. Press control space or type hint. Uh, so let's type in hint. And it essentially says what it is that you need to do. So Roo requires the installation of a persistent configuration like JPA. Um, so JPA, eventually you'll, you'll be able to use Hibernate um, or set Hibernate up. And again, it's dead simple. You type in, like it says, JPA setup, and then you hit control space. And then I guess control space. See, it has to hit it three times, but it doesn't work when you hit control space three times. You hit control space once, you choose database, you hit control space again, and it gives you a list of databases to use. Uh, now, I already talked about MySQL, and we're going to be using MySQL because I showed you how to install it and everything. Um, so, by all means, choose MySQL. Control space, provider. It's going to be Hibernate. Beautiful. And then you hit enter and watch this. It'll go and, um, and uh, set up Hibernate for you. So, look at this. It's, it it um, got the dependency. So, this is Maven um, along with... Uh, Spring Roo grabs the MySQL connector file that you'll need to connect to, to the MySQL database. Um, it grabs all the Hibernate files and all the dependencies that come from Hibernate, <coughs> excuse me, and it puts it all in to your project for you. No hassle, no fuss. You just type in this one line and boom, it does it for you. I love it. So now let's say hint again, and it's saying you need to create entities. So, what is an entity? Well, um, an entity is essentially the Java object that you're going to be using that will be essentially persisted into the database. Okay? Um, Hibernate calls them entities, and, um, and so that's what we'll be creating. So, in our example, I said I wanted to create a user um, where you can type in username, password, and maybe an email address or something like that. So, the user will be our entity in this case. So let's create the user entity. So we type in ENT, control space, control space. And um, now usually, I think I want to create, yeah, it says for the class name, it should be in the form with the tilde domain. The tilde uh, explains means it's a top level package that I specified when I created the project, which was actually just source. Um, but instead of typing in SRC, you can do the tilde. So now they recommend using the domain package. So this is actually going to be, when I type in, you know, tilde.domain.users, um, this is going to say, well, put it in the source.domain package with the um, object name being users is kind of how it, it's defined or how it will interpret this uh, text. So put in the source package, which is a top level package. Create a new domain package, because as you can see right now, we don't have anything, and and create it with the user users as the uh, the name of the file, um, and say enter. Boom. So now, um, it should have created source domain. Now did it do that? Yes, it did. So now this is the one interesting thing that I, I'm not a big fan of with Roo, but again, you only have to, you only have to do it once, so it's not a big deal. Um, it hasn't actually set up our source folder property. It set one up for resources. See how this has a little indicator here, a little crosshair in the folder, whereas this one doesn't. This just marks it as a source folder, um, which is all of our, where our source files will go. So I'm just going to right click on the My First Web App um, project and go to Properties. <clears throat> and I think it's in build path source so you see here it has source main resources already defined and you see source main resources is here so I'm going to add another folder um, and I'm going to add I think I need to add do I add Java I think that's the level I need to add let me say okay and try that out <clears throat> 